a question that I'll ask and I won't answer it right now. Is it good to suppress your emotions? Is it healthy to suppress your emotions? Yes or no? All the men said yes. All the women said no. Exactly what I thought would happen, right? Now it's very interesting because then you come to Yusuf alayhi salam, the last one in this equation, in this sequence. Ishaq alayhi salam, we don't see any pain being caused to him in the Quran, right? But Allah knows the life of a Nabi always comes with its challenges, right? The life of a Prophet always comes with its challenges. But Yusuf alayhi salam, when Yusuf's in front of his brothers and he is in a position of power and they don't know who he is and they say, in Yasrik, if he steals, right? If he stole, meaning bin Yamin, then he had a brother that stole before just like him, meaning they insulted Yusuf alayhi salam not realizing they were standing right in front of him. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about Yusuf alayhi salam? Yusuf swallowed it to himself. Like he that burned, stings. And he said, that you are in an evil place. And Allah knows what you're planning. SubhanAllah, think about how profound this is. So first of all, you see again, that he is Halim, he's taking a lot. I mean, for him to not just like take his brothers out in the moment, that takes a lot of patience. We always talk about Yusuf alayhi salam in the end and his willingness to forgive them. Most of us, if you saw your brothers after all those years after they threw you in the well, the moment that you, you, you set your sight on them and you're in a position of power, you're going to say to, uh, to the rest of the people in, in, in Egypt, uh, I have some business to take care of. Uh, come, it's fadlalu, let's go to the Nile River, right? You, ju you jump me into a well, it's time to get rid of you. Most of us would, would say, all right, revenge, right away, as soon as we see them, right? We'd want to take our revenge back. Yusuf is holding it all in. He's being patient with them. And then they insulted him. And he's still being patient with them. And Allah is showing us how he's, Allah, Yusuf fi nafsihi. Like it was inside of him when they said that comment. And so much so, subhanAllah, he was turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so much so, that Allah recorded the words he said to himself for us to recite today. Think about how profound this is. SubhanAllah, Yusuf alayhi salam said something to himself. Qala antum sharru makana. Wallahu anu bima tasifun. What an evil position you are or you all are in. And Allah knows what you're planning. He said it to himself. And imagine if there's like a microphone on the inside of the heart and amplifying it. What he said to himself in his pain is in the Quran. Meaning billions of people have recited out loud what a man said to himself in that pain as he swallowed it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is so profound, subhanAllah. And it's one of the greatest ways that you can see validation, like Allah Azza wa Jal showing Yusuf alayhi salam and showing us that the cry of the believer to himself is not lost. You know, you might say to yourself, here's how shaitan gets to you. Shaitan says, are you going to let that go? If you don't say anything, then the record won't be straight. You have to say this and you have to say that. Eggs you on, respond. Be louder than them. Be more aggressive than them. Do this, do this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing, just as he shows us with Zakariya alayhi salam in the corner of Al-Aqsa and these prophets as they made their silent du'as, du'a and khafiyya, that even the inner thought of the believer when he swallows for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah azza wa jal is recording that and that that could be a source of great, tremendous reward for that person. Now here's the thing, subhanAllah, halimun awahun munib. Every single one of them you see this. And the question that I asked in the very beginning, and it is an important question, is it healthy to suppress your emotions? No. But it is prophetic to redirect your emotions. That's what you see in all three of these prophets. They had a method of redirect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They took it from here, and then they brought it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here. Everything they took, yasbiru ala adahum. Everything they took from the people, they took back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ibadah. And that allowed them to be the amazing people that they were and to have that khuluq, to have that trait. 
بالتحلم. Knowledge is through seeking knowledge and forbearance is through practicing it. And dear brothers and sisters, if you simply suppress your emotions and hold it in all the time and, and you don't talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with it, then at some point you're just going to explode. At some point it's just going to come out in the worst way. And that's the thing. So a lot of people, they take, they take, they take, and then eventually the, the balloon pops. And then it all breaks loose, right? The prophets always had that valve. Every single night. They had that valve with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even subhanAllah, the scholars mention when Yaqub says to his sons, Sawfa astaghfiru lakum rabbi. After it all came to be, Yusuf said, I forgive you. Right? When the brothers said to their father, after everything had been done, Istaghfir lana, right? To seek forgiveness for us. He said, I will seek forgiveness for you. The ulama mentioned what? That Yaqub had a wird, he had a time where he would pray Qiyamul Layl. At waqt al-sahr, at the time right before Fajr, the last third of the night. And so when he's saying, Sofa astaghfiru lakum rabbi, that I will seek forgiveness, he's saying, in the last third, when I wake up and I do my qiyam, I will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. I'll take that sincerity, because that's his release vow. So they didn't suppress their emotions, they redirected their emotions. That's why the prophets of Allah were able to endure the greatest trials because they had the greatest outlet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the prophets were able to endure this mission because they knew who they were doing it for and they always turned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.